Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel, Flashback TNT. You've seen the title, it's a VR, a VR to uh, James's Time Warp Zone of Tat, um, who I thought was a friend of mine until he tagged me in this uh, this VR. He wants a response, he wants to hear what my top 10 games of all time are. Now, he's just asked me an absolutely impossible question. <laughs> I've been racking my brains all week and uh, I thought I, I came to a conclusion. I had 10 games. In a list and then five games that uh, I saw I was going to mention as honorable mentions and I've come to get the games out and <laughs> it turns out my original 10 games was actually a 12 game list um, something subconsciously inside must have been like ah, you can't do it <laughs> so I've had to do the uh, heartbreaking thing and remove two and um, I have actually got a bit of a sweat on <sighs> I, I honestly don't think this could be a, a definitive list Possibly five or six of them would be in the top ten all the time, but I could definitely chop and change a few. But I've done this to um, mix it up a little bit. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll start with the honourable mentions. Right, so first one, Battlefield 2. Uh, this was my sort of introduction to PC gaming. Um, my uncle... Uh, played it a lot on his PC um, and my uncle died last year so it's a bit of um, uh, it's a fantastic memory of him um, yeah he, he was playing it and I was like wow that looks amazing um, so I decided to buy my own PC a, a bit of a gaming PC I got it from PC World it was a, a Siemens Fujitsu I think if I remember rightly um, and me and my uncle would play this online I mean, I would spend hours by myself as well, just just playing this. Um, I was quite happy with a sniper rifle, uh, just like sitting on the, the edge of the map, just trying to snipe people. Um, I think it was probably my first foray into like um, sort of a massive multiplayer online game where it was like teams. Um, certainly, uh, certainly on the PC, as I say, it was the first game I played properly on mouse and keyboard. It sort of, it was an introduction to mouse and keyboard for me. Um, and I looked back at my old uh, gamer tag on it recently and I had 50 hours just playing Sniper alone. I either liked to play Sniper when I wanted to chill or like my preferred choice for like first person shooters is like um, Assault. Um, either with uh, like um, a, a sniper, not a sniper rifle, um, like a, a machine gun or a submachine gun. So yeah, um, God knows how many hours I had on the, uh, on the machine gun, on the Assault. can't remember but Sniper, uh, it was definitely... 50 hours, I remember chuckling, thinking about that, yeah, so that's a, a great honourable mention that I wish they made them like like this now, I mean, the, the some of the stuff you could just do because it was so open, it felt like open world, there were massive levels and uh, the game seemed to last forever, there was some great service you could get on with some good, great guys uh, playing it, um, yeah, so Battlefield 2, I wish they made them like this now. <laughs> Right, next one, this is a bit of a placeholder because I don't actually have my copy, I don't know where it's gone. But um, it's Grand, Grand Theft Auto, but it's Grand Theft Auto 3, not 5. Um, I put this in just to remind myself to talk about it. Um, I think I'm sure Grand Theft Auto 3 was the reason I wanted a PS2. Um, another uncle um, had it on at his house, um, and I couldn't believe uh, the game. Obviously, I played Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2 on the, on the PlayStation. But um, when I seen this one in the 3D open world, I was like, I was blown away. And um, that's one of the first games on the more modern consoles after the N64 that I, I completed 100%. Um, I loved it, played the game and collected everything. I think there was like little bundles of cash you could find all around the, the city. And I, I did most of that even without guides and stuff. So that's how much I loved, the, I loved the game. I mean, I knew every nook and cranny of that map. It probably looks tiny now, I'd say. I haven't played it for a long time. Um, I'd love to find my original my original copy, but I'm not sure where it is. Anyway, yeah, so Grand Theft Auto 3 is another honourable mention. I don't, I've only got another 23 honourable mentions here, so... <laughs> what are you joking? Three more. Um, this one was relatively new, but I thought, you know what? It needs to go in. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. First BR I had a go at. Um, me and a mate absolutely loved this. A uh, friend from work, we would get home from work after our shift, and we would play till late, like, the early hours. I mean, you're talking about suspense and um, just getting the giggles and uh, <laughs> that, like that rush from winning your first game, like on duos, is absolutely fantastic. Um, that uh, that's never 
been sort of um, surpassed for us. Obviously, battle rail virginity was like broken with this, so newer battle rails don't seem to have that rush, and and seem to be a lot easier. Was this was like the the finality of this? If you got killed, you were out. Um, whereas other ones now, you can get buybacks and stuff like that. It's a lot easier. Um, yeah, I mean, we would sit there like shaking with cold and that because we were like that tense as the the top tense situations occurred and the, the map was getting small and you could hear people running about you underneath you in buildings or like lying on top of rocks so we had like a good uh like ditch to hide in snow that could see us and just there with sweaty hands and <laughs> yeah fantastic it needs to be mentioned it's a, it's a shame that isn't as good anymore either um just a quick one metroid prime this is one of those i just picked up at a whim really um, probably like read about it in a magazine or two and uh, yeah I really enjoyed Metroid Prime that was my first sort of like Metroid game um, so I played Metroid Prime 2 as well I haven't played number 3 but I just wanted to mention that because I thought that uh, was a big part of my GameCube um, life and the final one is PlayStation 2 game I don't know if this will get mentioned in anybody's top 10s but I needed to mention it because Pro Evolution Soccer on the PlayStation 2 was just like uh, amazing it's probably the reason that I didn't play many other PlayStation 2 type games um, always just played football football games mostly um, I've mentioned Grand Theft Auto but as we got a little bit older and obviously you get to like 16 17 18 um, me and Jordan would play that like when we we're like 16 17 then as you got towards like 17 18 you start going out on the town that like you just play pro you with your mates and have a few beers before you went to town yeah so I used to love the Master League and then um, I'll play it, I was on end by myself as well, just uh, getting the best players and, and stuff like that. I even think I went through one of them and renamed all the players. <laughs> I enjoyed it that much. Right, that's the honourable mentions out the way, I think. Uh, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I've got one more honourable mention because, oh, God, there's 11 in this. Right. This was torture, so thanks very much, James, for making me do this. I had to remove this one. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, couldn't believe it. I always remember um, Sunday morning, my dad would go to the car boot sales and um, I'd wait for him to come home. And I'd, I was always excited because he usually, usually brings us a present back. And this day, he got out of the car, I was looking out the window. Uh, he had a white, white carrier bag in his hand. I was like, oh, it's got to be for me. And he brought it in. It was um, a loose Mark II Master System. Um, and I'd never had a mass system before, so like when he gave us it, I was like, Whoa, what's this? I had a few carts with it, and obviously Alex Kidd built in, and then um, this was one of the carts. Alex Kidd was amazing as well, but uh, Sonic, this was the cause of us get, me and my, my three friends getting into trouble at school. I think I must have been in year three. Um, we, would, we would literally just draw this all day, draw the levels, and um, I can remember we were get, getting given like maths. To do on on sheets of A4 paper, we just literally turn the A4 paper around and start drawing Sonic. I actually think they called in our parents and split us up off the table because we were being that naughty. Well, not naughty, but just like really loving this, yeah. And obviously, you plug this in now, and it's absolutely amazing, isn't it? You can't beat the sounds, and it takes you right back to them days. Absolute epic, epic tunes. Sorry, Sonic. Oh, oh. right. Top ten. I've added a few more modern ones in this, just to spice up a bit. Number 10. This isn't like a... So you can go for top five or six there, like sort of like hold them places. But this, these few here could probably chop and change, depending on what mood I'm in. Right, 10. Dying Light. Bought this for the Xbox One, not expecting much. And I absolutely loved it. Um, It's sort of like, a, it's an open world uh, zom zombie apocalypse scenario. Um, you can manu uh, make tools, uh, make sorry, you can make uh, weapons with tools and stuff like that, or find like pipes and or specialized weapons that are hidden. Um, but that pushes you on to explore. And when oh, when you're talking about exploring, it's like parkour. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it's a few years old now, and it shows. It's a bit slow, but this got my blood pumping like just like PUBG. Uh, like you go out in the, in the night time because they were like safe zones and you, but you could go out in the night and during the night there was scarier faster type zombies um and if you're getting chased by them you knew about it 
and it was scary, genuinely scary. I'd play with the headsets on in the dark and oh man, I absolutely loved it. It was a bit of a thrill there, trying to get a chase. <laughs> um, yeah, I loved it. And number two is coming out this year, so I just hope it's as good as this one. Um, yeah, I just, the, the exploring and finding the things in houses and uh, breaking into houses, that was absolutely amazing. Or you go to the top of like bridges just to look look out over the over the, uh, the landscape. It was absolutely stunning. Uh, I'd never played anything like it really. So that had to be in. Um, number nine. Boom. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. This was the reason I stopped playing Battlefield 2. Um, I got into this on the Xbox 360 and um, I was away. I put so many days worth of time into this. Um, I just got better and better and better. And I honestly think this, this game into these two games, peaking with this, I was probably the best that I've ever been at a computer game. Um, I would love to have seen my kill death ratio on this by the time I'd finished. Because obviously when you start and you're getting used to it, it brings your KD down. But near the end of my time playing this game, I was it just felt so easy. Um, everything was second nature. I knew where spawn points were and everything. It was fantastic. But the good thing about this was it was a time at work where we'd all got 360s. There was a bunch of lads, say 10 to 12 of us, would get, get on on a Monday night and we'd just have an absolute laugh with this. Pu uh, public matches if there wasn't enough of us online to just play private but private matches are so funny um yeah you just don't get that anymore that's the thing i think the uh, the buzz from the call of duty has gone and they've just changed too much of it um, especially but for my taste anyway the kids nowadays um obviously don't mind probably but yeah i loved this even the campaign finished the campaign to a thousand g um and i think i did for for that one as well for world at war that was an absolute mission on the hardest level. I can remember it was the grenades that got you through the game on that one. Um, yeah. Anyway, great. So that's number nine. Put that there. Put them back down there. <clears throat> oh, sweating. I don't know. This is tough. Oh, man. I could do this tomorrow and give you a couple of different ones, probably. Right. So this is the most modern one, I'd say. Control. Another one I've seen, uh, seen that this was this was mentioned by a few YouTubers that I was watching and um, I thought, you know what, I'll give it a go because it was only like 15 quid or something. Um, I didn't have many PS5 games at the time. So I got a PS5 a few month, months ago. I didn't say anything on, on my channel or anything. Um, and I put it in. And it just it hooked us straight away. I love the mechanics. Um, there's so many different things to learn. But it was intuitive, and I loved I loved the story. I thought the cutscenes were cool. Um, what I loved about the it was a bit like RPG where you could upgrade yourself. But what I liked about it was it wasn't it was forgiving. If you made a couple of wrong sort of upgrades, you could reset and start again. You wouldn't lose anything. Um, yeah, and I, I found myself wanting to go back to play this time and time again until I completed it. And, and even when I completed it, I still had like quite a few missions plus the um, the DLC to do and I just kept playing it and that's that's a sign of a good game to me because I don't often do that once I complete a game I just generally leave it and um, yeah so I would just go back and, and play this even though there was nothing left to complete and I had the full story so yeah I thought uh, Remedy and 505 Games did an amazing job on this I mean I would even look at some of the actors talking about the game on on YouTube which that's how immersed I got with it so yeah I definitely recommend this as a, a modern game if you want to want to go Aha. this is um this is a fantastic one as well dead space now i think is it retro rich dave mentioned this one um why did i buy this i'm not sure i must have read about it somewhere um and it reminded me a little bit of resident evil 4 it was the, the same sort of like over the shoulder uh, scary type thing uh, I bought it and I was whoa, absolutely amazing. What a console Xbox 360 was. Um, it was, oh God, just the, just walking through like the the alleys in the ship, um, the corridors, and there would be like pings and pangs on the on the, on the pipes, and you just all of a sudden you just absolutely crap yourself because someone would jump out 
um, but you just wanted to play more and more and more. This was obviously a time before headsets and stuff, so I just play it in my bedroom on the telly, but in the dark. Um, I'd love to play it now with the headset on, I might actually have to try it. Um, yeah, another one that I went through on a few different uh, difficulty levels to complete on the hardest one. I loved the uh, the weapons on this and some of the uh, some of the stuff you could do with your suit. Um, the weapons like the the plasma cutter and that absolutely fantastic. I think it had like a pulse cannon or like a, a one that fired blades. Yeah, so much replayability with this and so much exploration to do. Uh, two and three were okay, but um, this is definitely where it's at. And I think this is getting remade as well. So that's definitely one you should try if you like your sort of scary games. Now, I'll add to this, um, my dad's seen us playing this and it's not often he wants to try a game and he tried it and he, he loves it. He's actually played it to the point now where he got through on the hardest difficulty setting without dying once. Yeah, that's how much he loved it. And he still likes the challenge now because obviously when you don't play it for a while you get rusty and you, you go back and you have to learn it again. Dead space. Is that number six? Oh... No, that was number... Oh god, I've forgotten too many here. No, right, one, two, three, four, five. This is number five, right. Again, I've just mentioned it actually. Resident Evil 4. Absolutely amazing. What can I say about this? Um, One of the only games that I've completed and then gone right back through again, as fast as I can. I think the, you get rewarded, I can't remember now what, what, what you get as a reward. It might be an unlimited rocket launcher or something like that, but then I'd go through again, just with the unlimited rocket launcher, just because it's so much fun. Um, it's a lot longer than you realise as well. Sometimes you think it's coming to an end and then you carry on. Like you'll kill a big boss, but then there's another another boss fight later on. Um, yeah, some of the, the, the bosses in this are, uh, the like the mid-game bosses or bad guys, so to speak, are fantastic, good designs. Um, I love the story. Uh, yeah, definitely one that that I like. I love the GameCube for. I don't know how many times I've completed this, but yeah, that's that's. It's generally why the the games that are in my, my list I've completed a few times at least. There's a few exceptions, obviously. Um, I mean that chainsaw guy there on the cover. Bloody hell! Some when you've got the sniper rifle and you're shooting them and you take the heads off. There's something quite satisfying about that. Um. Yeah, and I enjoyed the controls. I mean, I actually put these to the side to talk about this. Like me and my friend Jordan went through on the PS1 and completed these. Um, and then we completed them again with the Explorer cheat codes just for a bit of a fun. And it's so much fun having all the unlocked cheats. Um, so when this came out, it was a bit different for me, obviously over the shoulder. But didn't read any reviews, didn't read anyone's opinion. It made me own, own mind up and I, I loved it from the start. It, I didn't care that it was over the shoulder or, or like you're static when you're shooting. I just got stuck in and I loved it. Yep, Resident Evil 4. One of my favourite games of all time. That will always be in the list. Another one that will always be in the list. Going back to the 16-bit era. Dogs of War. Now I've got a few copies of this because it's that, it's that dear to my heart, this. Um, I've actually got the original disc, well, copy disc that my dad had on the Amiga. Amiga 500 that we, we played. And we still play this now from time to time. We haven't played it for a while, but now and again we put it in and have a good blast with this. Um, my dad would take the, the Gatling gun type gun, all the weapons, because you buy your weapons at the start and you, you're both mercenaries and you do missions for people um, in different countries and certain missions get paid more. So he'd start with the Gatling gun, a few grenades, all, all ammo. Then I would go with like um, a shorter range, uh, um, like assault rifle. But I would have to buy a rocket launcher because some of the... Some of the, the, the bad guys or, or tank, uh, tanks and stuff in the, in the game or like huts you have to blow up to get past or it makes it very awkward and you lose your lives. Um, yeah, it's brutal. This like they'll jump out of bushes and all kinds. It's funny. Um, yeah, so we still play this. We've completed it. I'm sure we have. Um, we also got right through it once where there was no missions left and the game sort of like it glitched and crashed. So I'm guessing, I don't know. I don't know what happens after that. <laughs> Yeah, Dogs of War, absolutely fantastic. Still so much fun from this and still one of the best uh, opening title sequences on the Amiga. <laughs> Looks like Rambo. <clears throat> right, so how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're top four. Tell you what, we'll talk about this one next. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I nearly 
took this out for Sonic. But this has got really special memories for me. Um, obviously, this was like this was the the most magical time probably for me. Um, discovering new games sort of by myself on the N64. I was just getting to that age where I'd read magazines and um, I was so excited for this. And it was, I can't remember if it was December 11th or 12th or something like that. It came out on a, possibly a Friday. Um, I really wanted it for Christmas and my mum let me stay off school to go up town to buy it. And um, I queued up outside Electronics Boutique and I stood in line and they gave me like a, a raffle ticket with number four on it. So I was fourth in line to buy this bad boy, and uh, I, I got I got in. I ran in the shop and I was actually second in the queue. <laughs> um, they didn't say anything like it was only obviously eleven or twelve or something at the time. It was Nineteen ninety-eight. I must have been twelve or thirteen. Um, yeah, and uh, I bought it, took it home. Mum took it off us, <laughs> and uh, I had to wait till Christmas. Uh, but when I got it, I absolutely oh, played this to death. You're talking like seven hours a day. I can remember Boxing Day. For some reason, I can remember starting it at ten o'clock in the morning. Like this is honest. Like this is truth. Uh, I started playing around ten o'clock in the morning, and I can remember my mum calling us down for like our turkey chips that we have on Boxing Day, our tradition, uh, at five o'clock in the afternoon. I, I just played it solid. Um, I absolutely loved it. Just the. Uh, I'd never played anything like it. Like. It was just so open world. Like imagine like a 12, 13 year old playing this. Um, I just explored everything, every nook and cranny, every border of the of the map. Like running around Hyrule, listening to the music. Like that opening title sequence as well, the beautiful music for, for that. When um, Epona and, and Link are running across Hyrule. Um, just the story and the bosses and the lore. Like this is my first introduction to Zelda and oh man. Funny enough, I've never ever played it again to completion. Um, it's one of those beautiful things when you're a kid, you just stick to and you love it and it doesn't matter how many hours it takes, you're going to enjoy it and you're going to savour it and that's exactly what I did. So that's why that made my top four or five. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful game. Now, number three. Going back a bit earlier, probably my first instruction to, to like the Nintendo franchises. Super Mario 3. I still complete this every year without fail. Um, I got this in a, a Super Mario 3 NES pack, which I've got over there. That isn't the original, but it was the similar one that I had. Mum um, got it from Freeman's catalogue, got delivered. Uh, I, I love this. Oh, man. How many times did I play this? I, I don't know. But it was similar to Sonic. We'd just talk about this all day, like the different suits. And I think... This was one of the first games I ever completed by myself and I can remember being so nervous when you fight Bowser at the end um, Oh god, like working it out as well Like, I don't know how old it'll be, maybe 8, 9 um, I, don't, I don't think it'll have been 10 Just like working out how to how to kill him and he jumps on you on the bricks and you jump out the way just before he gets you Wow I'm sure this, this was the game that was on, it was either this or Sonic I had on the 14 inch portable and um, I paused it because I was quite way through and obviously there was no save states and my mum knocked the telly off to put the hoover on <laughs> yeah but never got bored of it ever I, I love this this is so dear to my heart this game um, I completed this on the Switch recently actually I mean you just go back to it and I just don't get bored some of the levels I hate like um, I hate sand levels I always have done always will do um, or swimming levels as well yeah but I mean, it's iconic, isn't it? I mean, you're either a Super Mario World guy or a Super Mario 3 guy, I think, or girl. Um, yeah. Person. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Absolutely fantastic. Right, top two. Number two. Oh. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Now, being a massive James Bond fan, when this came out, um, I was absolutely blown away by it again. Oh God, that that um, the innocence of being so young yeah, and playing these games is God. I mean, I've told you stories about the uh, just the multiplayer aspect on this alone is worth it. Like me and my dad would play on the it was actually like a 20, 20 inch portable Sony white. It was like a white Trinitron, like a an old school type one. 
had a matchstick in the power button to keep the power on. <laughs> um, we put a bit of cardboard across the middle of the screen, so I would sit underneath. My dad would sit on like a high chair above, and we'd play the, the multiplayer. But we created our own games in the multiplayer, because I, I was obviously a bit better than my dad. Um, so we, we, create, we created scenarios, I think it's in Bunker, where we, we call it his perch, and um, we play with like proximity mines and stuff like that, and he would make traps, and I'd have to try and get through all the traps to get to him and kill him. Um, but obviously he could still kill me in the meantime as well, so I had to be doubly careful. Fantastic, and um, I played with my uncle again, who, who died last year, and um, my cousin, so we'd have four, four player games. Um, and I uh, played with my other uncle as well, uh, around at my house, who died in when I was 20 in 19... Sorry, he died in 2006. Um, so yeah, I've got great memories of, of playing that with with their uh, family. Um, me and dad used to, I used to drag him onto this all the time for, for a game. And obviously, I unlocked all the cheats. Um, which was the hardest cheat? I'm mean, going off memory now. I think it was maybe the one on the train, or possibly the one in. Oh, I can't remember the level now. There's like drawn turrets and stuff. <clears throat> ah, no, I can't remember now. Anyway. Yeah, so I unlocked all the cheats, which uh, which was another challenge, and I just, I just loved it. Just that that f is it the first level where you is it facility where you drop into the uh, the toilet. Just the the graphics then felt absolutely stunning. Obviously, they haven't aged well now, but I can still put this on and still play it like like I played it yesterday. Intuitive, like con just the the controls are a sort of muscle memory for me. But a lot of people I can imagine struggle with this now. I would love this to be uh, re released, please, Nintendo. I know Rare's at Xbox, but come on, do a deal with them. Rare did such a fantastic job for this. Man, I was such a James Bond fan anyway. Pierce Brosnan's my favourite. And this this came out actually quite a few years after uh, after GoldenEye. Uh, the, the movie. Uh, I was trying to think if there's anything else I'd like to say. Uh, so you can see why these are in my top ten. Right. Number one. Number one, Super Mario 64. Right, what do I say? So, I had an NES. Then, my dad got an Amiga. I didn't really know the Mega Drive and SNES existed because I loved the Amiga. It's just the way it was. Um, I was probably too young to really get magazines and that back then, to, and obviously I didn't have the, the cash. To go, just go up town myself and buy things. So I didn't really notice about the SNES and Mega Drive. Loved the Amiga for years. And then we'd go shopping every um, every Thursday. And I think it was every first Thursday of the month, the official Nintendo magazine would come out. And I can remember seeing the the magazine with the, like, the N64s come in. Um, and it just it, it caught me and it caught my imagination and I couldn't wait for it um, and I managed when it came out in I think it was the March by June um, my mum took me to Virgin Megastore and bought me one for Christmas it was 350 quid plus 60 pound with this game um, a week later she got a discount it was a 250 two, 250 pound plus 60 pound and a week later the, um, the Nintendo went down um, this is June time to 150 pound to try and compete with the PlayStation I think um, so she complained and got £100 back and with that £100 she got me Turok for 70 quid. Yeah, but um, anyway, this N64 was meant to be for a Christmas present, but I was allowed it straight away. And I can remember getting home, um, I plugged this in all by myself uh, into the back of the telly, switched it on. And um, bear in mind, I'm just used to Omega. I could not believe what I was seeing. Um, Obviously, I got up shouting, telling my mum and dad, look how amazing this is. Like even just the the, the front title of this when he goes, it's me, Mario, and the, the music starts, and you you can pull his face and like make it. It's like, what the heck is going on here? Started playing it, and within an hour, I had to turn it off because I was sick. Um, I was not used to 3D, <laughs> um, but soon got used to that. Back on it, and then oh man, this was absolutely fantastic. I don't think I ever got to 120 stars. Yes, James, 120. You can cling on to your 50-50 hope that there's more, but there certainly isn't. There's 120. Um, <laughs> I love that. Uh, so 
Yeah, but I completed it obviously. I would just go back this all the time. Obviously, when I, the the awe, I was in awe. Like it's hard to explain. I mean, will I ever get that again? Probably not, because when you're a kid, like these things are first times for you, aren't they? And, and they stick with you. Um, oh, it's absolutely stunning. This just again, I would explore every boundary, trying to well, just try glitches and stuff like that, and try and get into places I shouldn't have been, because you've done that much in the game that. Um, you just wanted to try everything else. Uh, oh man, I absolutely love this. And I recently completed this 220 stars um, and I really enjoyed it. And it doesn't, again, I don't get bored at all. The level designs and that are, are, are flawless to me and the timeless as well. This will always be an amazing game. And to think this was the first 3D game they did as well, um, Nintendo, like for Super Mario 64, uh, Super Mario franchise, absolutely amazing. It's, it's, it's iconic, absolutely iconic. So there you go. I've uh, talked for over thirty minutes there. I could probably talk about another twenty games if I wanted. <laughs> Come back to me next year, and I'll give you another ten. <laughs> um, yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, just one last thing to do before I go. I'd like to tag somebody else and shift this burden onto them. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, the winner of the tag is um, Clayton from Clay Graphics. Uh, another good guy he actually did the the banner art for my channel so big thank you to him is is a, a proper gent um and he's very knowledgeable on his games and he loves his games and he's passionate so i'd love to hear his top 10 of all time i'm sure he'll struggle just as much as me and uh, obviously uh, james as well who tagged me so i'll put both channels that i've mentioned in the in the comment uh, description box below so please check them out um and give them a sub as well the the good guys and they have good content so yeah um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.